Italy, one of the greatest countries on earth. It's achingly, achingly beautiful. It's like a mirage. I'm Alex Polizzi, and my Italian heritage is intrinsic to who I am. Buongiorno. I've got a treasure trove of childhood memories that were made here. Now I'm returning on a voyage of discovery that will take me from top to toe. It gives me shivers to be back. Immersing myself in the culture of its vast regions. <laughs> Reconnecting with my roots. Hi, darling. And uncovering some of this magnificent country's secrets. This has completely blown me away. Wow. Wow. This is one of the glories of Italy. And if you haven't seen it, you really should come. I've left behind the cities and lakes of the north and traveled three hours south into central Italy, where I'll be exploring the little known Le Marche region before crossing the country to reminisce in Rome and finally into the hills for a family reunion. Le Marche, uncharted territory for millions of tourists who visit Italy each year. To me, its lush landscapes, sparsely populated with medieval villages, invite you to discover the region at the most leisurely pace. Le Marche is embraced by more than 100 magnificent miles of Italy's eastern coastline. And the most magical way to explore it is just as morning breaks. Love it. Buongiorno. Isn't this just stunning? This very, very dreaded hillside and this wonderful blue sea. White beach. It's a great combination. This is Tranquil Porto Novo, a tiny retreat hidden away on the Conero Riviera in the centre of the region. Few visitors know it exists. But for a cluster of artisanal fishermen, this is their place of work. The crystal waters lapping these shores are some of the cleanest around, and apparently they conceal one of the region's culinary riches. Mussels get a very bad press, but largely they're farmed. This is the last place they're fished from the wild. So if you're going to eat mussels, this is where you should do it. For decades, local trattoria have celebrated these little delicacies. But fishing for them is considered such a physically tough practice that it's now, sadly, in decline. Buongiorno. Eduardo is part of the Moscioli Fishing Cooperative, a team of just four boats that remain in this protected area. Salve, buongiorno. Ciao, Eduardo. Alex. Ciao, prego, benvenuto a bordo. Grazie. Sei abbronzatissimo già. Sì. <laughs> it usually takes two strong cups of coffee to wake me up this early, but Eduardo seems to be doing the trick. Each morning at the crack of dawn, the crew head out to a reef called Trave. It's one of the biggest natural breeding farms for mussels in the world, and it stretches for 700 meters underwater. You can see the line of the reef coming down the mountain and it's all the way out there. So it's, a, it's an amazing natural phenomenon. The divers spend hours scraping off the mussels that have grown on this reef. Eduardo and his father feel a sense of responsibility towards their fellow fishermen. It prosegue fino laggiù, laggiù dove l'ultimo l'ultimo è Quel, quel pennone che si vede è una Madonna, so, la Stella Maris. So, it, he says this is incredibly dangerous for shipping, even though it's very clearly marked. And so him and his dad put the Madonna out there as a point, a reference point, not just for the fishermen, but to bring good luck in the sea. Buongiorno.
dove le barche non vedendo niente perdono il loro motore. This is a sustainable yet grueling way to fish, which is why the numbers willing to do it are falling. Massimo is now the crew's youngest diver and he's 52. Vede la sua vista, la sua cima, quando Massimo ha riempito il, il voligino, si chiama il voligino, da uno, e lui tira. Poi mette i moscioli qui, mette i moscioli in questa lavatrice, sì. ok? E eh, i moscioli si lavano, quelli piccoli, non grandi, scappano, vengono in atto. Sì. It's so nice and okay. eco. Poi fa un giro. I mean, fa un giro. Okay. Fish. Okay. Miss, for you. Grazie. Look at this granddaddy muscle. This is very, very much. It's enormous. Yeah. Not that size is everything, I'm told. Pescati e ben via. Sì, e mangiati. Fresher than that, I do not know. It's a little one. È molto pericoloso questo. Sì? Questo ti taglia le dita. Oh. Eh? E non lo mangi? Sì, è molto buono il maschio. Ah. Ah. È un bellissimo crostaccio. Ah. Buono, molto buono. Sì. This is a real man. I wouldn't want to put these molto... things anywhere near my tongue. Siccome è piccolo, lo ributtiamo in mare. Ok. Is there any throwing him back into the sea because he's allora, such a fai, baby? Lo fai tu, eh? No! Ok. Eh? Decisa. Decisa, sono, okay. sono bella decisa. Sì. Lo butto. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Godspeed. Have another few happy years. <laughs> Time of fishing in these waters comes with its perks. Eduardo knows just where this coastline can be glimpsed at its best. Look how beautiful this is. È quasi gemellaggio del verde. This is his favorite spot because it's the amazing combination of greens, the green from the hillside and the green of the sea. Look at this. Guarda. Oh, mamma mia. It's lovely to be with someone who's so knowledgeable about his area and who's so passionate about it. I mean, he is a part of a long, long tradition that goes back all the way to the 30s. This definitely does feel like one of those special places. You'd rather that not too many people find out about it. Mussels have never really been my favorite dish. But since I've been given the opportunity to sample this morning's catch, I'd be mad to resist. I'm told the only way to savor their delicate flavor is to cook them on their own. And these men have been doing it long enough to know best. Abbiamo messo in pentola senza acqua. Yeah, senza acqua. Senza acqua, perché l'acqua ce l'hanno loro in abbondanza dentro. Quindi appena si aprono formano l'acqua e così si possono mangiare. Sono anni che non mangiano. Ecco, così si mangia e basta, basta. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Che buono. It's delicious. My goodness. What I didn't expect. What is it they are so sweet. Sì, ma la sarà bocca buona, ma che. Ho sentito. <laughs> you said that's what making love tastes like. So they all say that you can't do this job unless you're madly in love with the sea. Um, and look at how at home they live. This is where they live. They basically live on this beach in each other's company. I feel very privileged. Grazie. I feel very privileged to have been in I may not have been a fan of mussels. But this rustic style of cooking in such a stunning setting is a winning combination. And Le Marche region still has a few more secrets to give up yet.
For the visiting traveller, Le Marche holds a few surprises. And the biggest one of all? It produces some of the best shoes in the world. From Prada to Gucci, if you've ever wondered where some of fashion's most coveted designs are crafted, it's here. But one exclusive brand can boast that its business was born in Le Marche, and I'm about to unleash the credit card. I can feel a buying spree coming on, in fact. Just a short drive inland from the coast, you'll find the headquarters of Lori Blue. Here, you can walk in the shoes of the well-heeled since the 70s. I mean, these are works of art. Look at this. If you're feeling frivolous, for some of the designs here, you can expect to pay up to a thousand pounds. This is my idea of heaven. When I die, I want heaven to be just like this. <gasps> I have got to try those on. The public face and one half of the couple behind this lavish brand is a former school teacher and ex-policewoman, Anarita Pilotti. It's a feast for the eyes to see such an array of designs under one roof. And they're all dreamt up right here. Wow, non ho mai visto una cosa simile. Questo è molto carino. Questo è per le spose, per brillare ancora di più quel giorno. So that brides shine even more on their big day. Eccole qui, vedi. Questa è una, questa è una delle scarpe più che a noi ci rappresenta maggiormente. Mamma mia, che bella scarpa. Deve essere fierissima di quello che fa. Unlike some of the Italian traditions I've explored on my travels, shoemaking is still as vibrant as ever. There is a 250 strong workforce here alone, producing up to 1,500 pairs every day. These are the machines that prepare the tie on the pelle, on the fodere, on the montoni. He is so fast at what he does, and it allows him to get the most out of every skin. A pretty vital skill when some of the exotic materials used here cost up to 500 euros a meter. Questo è il regno delle nostre pelli. Bello che Look how long this python was. Almost four meters long. Mamma mia, look how enormous it is. This is farmed python, obviously, just to make it clear. Dalla squama, qui si sente la squama. Però questo è vero. The fake one, you can feel, is completely smooth going in one direction. The real python is slightly raised. As you run your hands along, it's not completely smooth. Look at that! It's so exciting. It's what every chic lady will be wearing this autumn, I'm reliably told. From a skin, the production of a shoe. It's really impressive. To discover a global brand with 26 boutiques in cities from Dubai to London in this little known region is a complete surprise. And the reclusive man behind it all isn't what you'd expect either. Graziano Cucù prefers to hide in his office upstairs where there's not a computer in sight. <laughs> le sue scarpe ne ho già comprato quattro ho paia visto, ho visto, ho visto. come aveva avuto questo pensiero di farlo okay. però cominciai da subito a fare le scarpe non andai più a scuola e a scuola mi avevano imparato a usare la raspa 
lo stucco, la lima, eh, questo mi è servito qualcosa. Dove trova l'ispirazione? Questo non me lo puoi chiedere. No! E bisogna essere un po' pazzi. Una delle più grandi aspirazioni ti prende che quando hai 200-250 persone che li devi pagare, li devi ah. far lavorare, allora lì ti ispiri molto. In gergo viene chiamato che la necessità guzza l'ingegno, si dice in Inghilterra. In, so, necessity is the mother of invention. Sì, esattamente la stessa eh, cosa. E questa qui, l'aspirazione mi sì. viene da questo. Sì. Graziano Cocò ha un enorme drive, un trait che ho riconosciuto nella mia propria famiglia. E questa charming region certamente provide enough inspiration. Whilst Le Marche is at the forefront of fashion, it is also steeped in history. And if you journey south, you'll find one of my favorite ancient cities of all. Ascoli is the little known highlight of the southern Marche, affectionately named the city of Travertine. I was last in Ascoli about 11 years ago. And honestly, it gives me shivers to be back. I love this city. All this white stone, it gives it a wonderful, calm, unified look that, frankly, is a balm to the soul. <laughs> Whenever I talk about how much I love Ascoli, people look at me quizzically. They don't really know what I'm talking about. I think this is one of the regions that has yet to be discovered by mass tourism although I'm sure it's not far away. <laughs> Ascoli is like Rome's long-lost cousin. Its perfect piazzas heave with history. But unlike the capital, this is a city on a much more compact scale, with an altogether more sedate pace, making a wander around here a pleasure. This is just astonishingly lovely. I came to Ascoli with my boyfriend of the time, and I became completely enchanted by it. It's amazing because the memories have come absolutely flooding back. I can virtually remember every meal I ate and the music I was listening to. I don't know many places that have this effect on me. Stefano Tulli is a born and bred resident of Ascoli. Ciao. Ciao. Alex Polizzi. Stefano Tulli, piacere. Ciao, piacere nice mio. Meeting. What a great place to meet. Welcome to my hometown. Thank you. It's beautiful and I Thank love you. seeing the mountains in the yeah. distance. The beautiful thing about Ascoli is that it has always maintained its own beautiful essence of a small, typical Italian small town. Well, what it seemed to me when I was here last was it's a, it's, it's a city on a very nice scale. Yeah. It feels very livable. I don't know if you feel that too. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. And that's why, that's why I decided to come back here to live, you know, from Milan, from this city. That's, here is the place where I can live a better life. To me, Ascoli has some of the prettiest architecture I've ever seen but I never realized it was the local families who created the trend of building all of its towers. Why did they build these towers? To demonstrate their power, you know? Local family used to build their them. Their wealth and their power. Their time. wealth, yeah, their mm -hmm. wealth and their power. So the higher, the better, the richer. And then they were, some of them were destroyed, but the most important ones are still there. And so that's why Asco is still called, it's still famous as the 100 tower city. Stefano's own family history still maintains a strong presence in the city. So, we're going to one of the best places in Ascoli. This is Cafe Meletti, a mainstay of Ascoli's social scene. When I was last here, I noticed that the drink all the locals had in their hand was Moletti. This aniseed liquor has been the city's most celebrated treasure for over a century and Stefano's grandfathers invented it. The great thing about it is that the local aniseed is made in a place which is very close to Asco. So it's, again, it's a local thing, you know? It's like a homemade stuff. So it's, it's very, mm, very typical of our city. Is it very strong? 
Uh, yeah, it's 34 degrees, so it's Great. pretty strong. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Do you like it? Very fresh. Like it? Lip smacking good. Mmm, delicious. It's very strong, very aniseeding. Yeah. You wouldn't want to drink it if you didn't like aniseed. Frankly. You usually drink it with or after coffee, after lunch or after dinner, or uh, after, you know, a night. It's, it's very typical, you know? It's, lo it's like a local thing, very local thing, you know? For the visiting tourist, a glass of Meleti might seem like an acquired taste, but it's a part of the culture here. And I'm about to indulge in another of this great country's passions. Italians have been enjoying the theater since Roman times. In this region alone, you can find over 100 atmospheric venues. I love the intimate Ascoli Theater with its neoclassical style and I couldn't come to this city without losing myself here all over again. <laughs> Gosh. Isn't it pretty? In my late 20s, I had a lovely boyfriend, Luca and he took a spettacolo, a piece of theatre, around Italy. And this was one of the theatres he brought me to. I always sat in there in what would be the king's box. I always sat right in the middle. And he was amazed, Luca, because I used to see this piece night after night after night. And he's a brilliant actor, still is. And I used to cry every night because it was so beautiful. <laughs> it only seats about 800 people. It's very classic of the genre. It's like a little chocolate box. It's amazing how vivid those memories are to me. I really enjoyed that time in my life. <sighs> this is just the beginning of a nostalgic time for me. And as the capital beckons, it won't be my only brush with my past love, Luca. From the tranquility of the Le Marche region, my journey continues to the epicenter of Italian life, Rome. Rome is probably the city that I know best after London. I lived here for three years and I love it madly. My father, who died when I was nine, was Roman and his family lived here uh, and still live here, actually. I have cousins here. I have my aunts and uncles here. You know, it feels like home. They say all roads lead to this eternal city. It was so called because the Romans have always believed that the city was indestructible. Well, it's still going strong after 3,000 years. It's a very strange contradiction of cities. It's a kind of modern one overlaid over many, many ancient cities. It's almost impossible to live in. It is quite chaotic. One of the things I'm proudest of in my life is the fact that I learned to drive around the city, which nobody except natives ever dare to do. And yet, I mean, who could fail but be completely enchanted by the fabric of where one lives here? It's a place, too, that has a lot of these beautiful buildings, the fountains, the history, and yet some of the nicest things are in the back streets, the things that aren't quite so obvious to the casual tourist. Some of my favorite vistas of this city are off the beaten track and not necessarily where you'd expect to find them. The grand entrance to the Priory of the Knights of Malta on the Aventine Hill contains a keyhole that invites you in on Rome's best kept secret. Nobody knows if this perfectly positioned peephole was intentional 
or just an incredible coincidence? So nice to be back. I don't know why I've stayed away so long. I don't want it to be so long again. I tell you that for nothing. Everybody knows Rome's most famous landmarks, from Piazza Navona to the Colosseum. But I'm returning to the Rome I remember fondly. Starting with the family business, the place where I came to work 15 years ago and cut my teeth as a restaurant manager, Hotel de Roussy. In the height of summer, this place is a secret oasis of calm. It's very special, as far as I know. It's the only garden in a hotel in the whole of Rome. Here, nearly 3,000 square meters of leafy green gardens are open to the public, waiting to be discovered. Sitting here now recalls memories of decadent dining, as well as a few foreign faux pas witnessed when I was here. I'm having my morning cappuccino. Morning is the only time in Italy you should have a cappuccino. Really, it is virtually illegal to have one after 11 o'clock. I'm always amazed in England when people order a latte or a cappuccino after their lunch. Here, the food police would be after you. On one memorable occasion, I watched someone pour the glass of water they traditionally give you with your espresso to wash it down with, pour it into their espresso cup to lengthen the coffee. And on another occasion, I witnessed some witchless Englishman ask the parmesan to sprinkle on his pizza. If you want to seem Italian, it doesn't matter the trousers you wear, it's how you drink your coffee. The Romans have always taken this early 19th century building to their hearts. But for me, the gardens are one of the city's most special secrets. Picasso once treated this serene space like his own Roman living room. But I'm a little biased, as my mother had a hand in the garden's creation. Especially in this heat, it's so nice to have the shade of the garden. It really is. You know, you sit up here, and even now, which is a very hot day, you feel quite cool. So there's a, a sort of a, a apocryphal story of Picasso leaning out of the window and picking a, a, an orange from one of the trees. And we've, we've planted orange trees again. And Cocteau said, this is paradise. I love all the little nooks and crannies. I know, you can come and sit up here. I never have, but one yeah. should with a book. Yes. Oleander, which is a typical Italian plant that grows anywhere, and even on motorways. And this is a sort of jasmine. Jasmine. Rosemary, I always love seeing rosemary. I've planted everywhere, actually. But here it's really apt. I agree. An hour or two spent here, and you almost forget that the hot-tempered city rages on all around you. It is lovely, it is lovely. I never say no to coming to Rome when there's a job to be done here. I rush over fast. It is lovely. You could easily spend days taking in Rome's rich culture. But in the three years that I spent here, I got to know life as a local. This square sits firmly in my favorite part of Rome. We are here in Piazza Mate, which is known as the square with the fountain of the turtles. This is where I live when I lived in Rome. It's a great place to live in. It doesn't seem to have changed that much. This is the Jewish ghetto. It's home to the oldest thriving community in the city. And it's now one of the trendiest neighborhoods to be. Michaela has lived in Rome all her life and was born from a family that traces its roots here back over 2,000 years. Here on your left, you Trastevere, Campo de Fiore in front of us. This is really one of the hearts of the, of, of the city and where the city started its amazing developing during, throughout the centuries. And the Jews of Rome have always been here, between the bank of the river and this other side of the river. On this side, they've been forced to leave 
for about 330 years. And, uh, and today it's our place, not as an obligation anymore, but we come here. F if you can afford it. <laughs> to, live. to live here, forget it, it's impossible. Imagine that 15 years ago when this was still not cheap, but affordable, reasonable, I told my parents, let's go back to the gate. I feel a connection, it's our place. And my mother said, me living with those schleppers, which is the <laughs> Yiddish it. for poor ones. And I said, and, and so she didn't even want to listen to me. And now yeah. between 10 and 15,000 euros per square meter living here. Because it's like London prices. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's unique. I lived here for three years and I loved it. I love the fact that it's got a very neighborhood feeling. Yes. So there's a wonderful fruit and veg shop. There's fantastic bread. There's a newsstand. There's obviously all the restaurants. Um, you know, you can get all your needs. Yes as well as the best ice cream in Rome, I think, yes. right here. Yes, it's true. Um, and so that's a very attractive. It's like a little village in the city. Mm -hmm. No neighborhood would be complete without a bakery, but the one here has earned quite a reputation for itself. Bocione, run by three formidable sisters, is so famous it doesn't even need a name above the door. This shop, when I lived here, I went in here almost every day, and they, every time, it was like the first time they'd ever seen me. Never yeah, they smile. They see so many people, and, uh, and it's, it's their personality. It's like, it, it's their characters. Yeah. They, they have to behave like that, because all the world knows the way they are. And so they cannot ah, I see. lose the, uh, yeah, the role. They lose their edge, would they? <laughs> exactly. God forbid that they should smile, and the facade <laughs> would crumble. <laughs> yes. I'm going to risk life and limb and go in and buy cake. Let's go. This family business has been going strong for nearly 200 years. People come from all over the world to try their famous sweet treats and experience the infamous customer service. This is over the famous cinnamon biscotti with almonds. Yeah. This is called Ginetto. Yeah. But getting the grumpy sisters to crack a smile is still as difficult as ever. Do you need anything else besides of the cake? No, or is it fatto una torta sotto Alex, mi sembra. See, they pretend they are annoyed by us. But inside, they love it. Gnada, questa torta? Eh. Okay, Mamma mia. <laughs> they might be grumpy, but it is the most delicious cake. <laughs> My memories of Rome are entwined with the hours I spent at a local's haunt in the heart of the Jewish ghetto. This is Café Bleve. Back in my 20s, the owners Anacleto and Tina treated me like their own. And today, the welcome is still as warm. Mm, che piacere. Che piacere. Sei diventata proprio grande. Pff, troppo vecchia vuol dire. No, terribili, belli corti e riccia. Sì, <laughs> quelli hanno... E adesso che sono vecchie li ho lunghi, chissà oh. perché. <laughs> But part of the reason the cafe is so dear to me is because it's where I whiled away many an evening with my old boyfriend, Luca. His acting career has taken him all around the world, but no other city has managed to entice him away from Rome permanently. Mm. Oh my God. I know, here we go, like the old days. <laughs> Cheers, darling. So tell me, you still live here? Yes. It's, um, I think it's... A very unique place because it's very quiet. Still, no tourists, not much tourists because there's so many shops. And the tradition of the Jewish ghetto, I think in the last 10 years, got much, much better. The identity of the place is very, it's nice, it's, it's more strong. You're so international, but you still live here and you always come back here. And... No, you have the best food. The weather is so mellow, so sexy. It is, it is nice. 
Maybe the light, you know, the light in Rome is yellow. You yeah. notice that. We've conquered this light. So the old town is very seductive. And if you're lucky that you can leave once in a while, then you want to come back to Rome. It is brilliant to see you again, darling. <laughs> it's very brilliant. I'm always in love with Alice. What am I going to do with that? Luca always had a way with words, which is why the conversation and wine always flowed here. Rome has unlocked plenty of personal memories for me, but my next stop is a place literally steeped in my family's history. In the hills just south of Rome is this remote mountain hamlet. My grandfather, Charles Forte, was born here. Until recently, it was called Mortale. But the community have honored his memory by now renaming the place Monforte. Even though he made a name for himself all over the world, he regarded this tiny village relatively untouched by modern life, as his home. My grandfather came up here every year, even when he was incredibly doddery. My grandmother used to bring him up at least twice a year. And he used to come here and play bocce with all the other old men and sit and reminisce. Even when his memory went, this was the place that was the most vivid to him. He may not be with us any longer, but the family home where he grew up still is. It's a bit bittersweet being back here, actually. Uh, it's lovely to be here, and I really feel their presence, my grandparents, in this house. This is where he came from. This is where we all come from. And I'm incredibly proud of being the grandchild of someone who made such an enormous success of himself. I, having made that big step from here, I want to keep the momentum going. I want to make him proud of me. And it's something that drives me enormously, and I know it's driven my mother and my uncle. And, you know, I don't want to let him down. Dad went to England and built what he built. You know, he had 800 hotels, he had 60,000 employees. Um, he never forgot where he came from, uh, and he certainly wasn't ashamed of it. And he always used to try and do what he could for the village and he did up the church, he put the Madonna at the entrance of the village. Every year he paid for the festa. And then lately he used to come back and, and carry um, Sant'Antonio. Yeah, um, it's yes. made me really, really miss him. Yes, I know. And I'm glad there's still this house. He loved coming up here. And he always used to say, this is the perfect size house, because he always used to love having us all around, everyone. It's, it's lovely, I must make more of an effort to come up. The festa is what's brought me back here today. It was an occasion that my grandfather was passionate about. Every year, the locals celebrate the patron saint of the village, San Antonio. And over time, it's become something of a reunion for all of the Fortes around the world who left to make a living. It's amazing how it draws them back. I mean, Fortes went from here far and wide especially in England. Lots of them went into the catering trade, lots of them did ice cream. Wales, Ireland, Scotland, they went all over. I'm sure quite a few will be returning today. I'm yeah. here for the first time. Yeah. Where else? Is it the first one? I'm trying to remember. I must have been up before, but, you know, there's so many photos that I'm, I'm not quite sure how much is recovered memory and how much is real. I remember being very bored up here for months and months as a child. It's impossible, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Jean! Sorry. Auntie Jean! Hello, Alex, how are you? Hello, darling. It's lovely to see you. Oh, a long time. No see. Darling, you look fab. <laughs> Thank you very much. This kind of celebration is a regular sight in towns and villages across the southern Mediterranean. It's a tradition, but it's not every day you have a real connection to one. Let us 
Santo. Ocupacionevole Santo Antonio. Ave Maria, piena di grazie, il Signore è con te. Tu sei benedetta fra le donne, e benedetto il frutto del seno tuo Gesù. Santa Maria, Madre di Dio, prega per noi peccatori, adesso in cura della nostra morte. This part of my journey has not only taken me to the core of Italy, but to the heart of my heritage too. More than anything, you know, I'm Italian because of my grandparents, because of my four grandparents. And this has been an amazing opportunity just to remember how much they meant to me. <laughs> Amid the jovial atmosphere, it's impossible not to feel humbled by the occasion. To see so many generations of Fortes coming together to celebrate the family's achievements is just incredible. Hi, Alex. Yes. Hi, darling. I'm going to get all emotional. I'm going to get all emotional. There's so much, you know, I can tell you. There's so many oh, people here, it's lovely. It's lovely because it's very fast. And a lot have come back from uh, relatives. They're all 40s. I know. There's all the 40s are here today there's from a lot of us. I don't want to be too mushy about this, but it is kind of, it is very special to be here. And I'm, I'm very glad that my mum's here with me. Um, and I kind of feel like this is where it all began for us as a family, as in our current form. And, um, and I, coming back here, it's rather amazing that my grandfather made such a success of himself coming from this little place so high in the mountains. The next leg of my Italian adventure is one of two extremes, the intensity of Naples and the immense calm of the Amalfi Coast. Anyone with any sensitivity gazing out on this view will feel the hand of the divine.